Hey guys, good morning. It's May 7th, 2021. I'm Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop and we are sewing along with Serendipity and we're sewing along with Socialites. And today I'm gonna do a live demo on Socialites. If you wanna see a demo of Serendipity, I had a live stream I filmed Monday that you can go watch and I talk all about row four and how I make one block. So. There's always that. There's lots of free tutorials on our channel. If you're looking for something to do this weekend, we have a playlist called Shortcut Quilts where you can just go and get a pre-cut because all of us have some of those laying around the house. Add a background and you'll have something to do. So if you're looking for something to do, check out our YouTube channel. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And today we're on block 30. And I'm gonna show you my blocks that I made with the Homestead Collection. This pattern comes free in three sizes. So nine inch, six inch, and three inch. Now when I started this whole thing off a couple months ago, I did a lot of tutorials of the nine inch. I've also done tutorials of the six inch, and now I'm gonna do a tutorial on the three inch. So if you're, um, and I've got lots of tips today on the three inch and how to get this to look, to look good. Obviously, the nine inch is the easiest, and you can tell how much more accurate the nine inch is because you can see how this is kind of curved on that three inch. So it's much harder to get everything straight on a three inch versus a nine inch. This fabric is called Homestead. So I'll put these aside, and I'll show you our sample maker blocks. So this is Quotation by Zen Chic, Figs and Shirtings by Fig Tree, Folk Tale by Layla Boutique, Shine On by Bonnie and Camille. And Camille is the designer of this week's block, Camille Ross Kelly. And here is the nine inch in cider by basic gray so one thing i wanted to show you on this is when you're looking these three have directional fabrics so this this person didn't pay attention to the direction and so it's really cool because when you stitch this on the corner this goes a different direction it goes on the bias so it gives it movement on the outside versus straight on the inside and then this one Deborah made all the lines go up and down which is what I'm going to be working on a similar fabric today and then this one the same thing so you can either do um, them all the same way or you could do them all mix and match and this one I wanted to show you we get a lot of questions on pressing open now I'm gonna demo the block pressed open because that's how we wrote the pattern because of the setting pattern. This is my block and I see, I want you to see how it lies flat. And this one actually stands up off the table a little bit. And one is pressed open and one is pressed to the side. But once this is all quilted, you won't be able to see that. So now you can tell that this is flatter than this, but once it's quilted, and you get the batting in there and everything, it's gonna all smush up nice. So we're gonna go ahead and start. I'm gonna get my block out of my Socialites binder. Again, we're on block 30. So this is a completely free pattern that you can get at Back Quarter Shop. I keep it in my Socialites binder with these little page protectors because um, if you poke holes in it, you might cut into your numbers because we're trying to fit everything in one page, so that's why I put them in page protectors. And today I'm gonna to be using the Figs and Shirtings fabric, and we're gonna work on a couple of things today. One of the things we're gonna work on is keeping the fabric directional, and another thing we're gonna work on is keeping those corners straight on square and a square. Now we do have square and a square paper that finishes at two inch, three inch, and four inch. So if you're doing the nine inch, you can use 
the three inch square in a square paper, which is ISE779. And if you're doing the six inch, you can use the two inch paper, which is ISE778. But somehow we're doing the three inch paper, which means we don't have paper to cheat. So we are gonna be making that in the future, but for now I don't have that. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut this the same way as the pattern because we're not going to cheat we're not going to have any paper to cheat with because i don't have that size yet i really wish i did but this will be a good tutorial on square and a square and why i struggle with it so much and why i did develop the paper so our background print we're going to cut eight one and a half inch squares i'm going to press this so it's nice and flat and this is uh, bella solid color 200 And it's the color I use the most. Now, if you ask me in a couple of years, maybe my color will change though, because that does happen. I used to use 97 more often. So from here, I'm just gonna cut eight one and a half inch squares. Now I will say, if you are doing this, the traditional method, it is so important to cut accurately here. If you're using the paper over here, you don't have to cut accurate. And you would cut according to the pad instructions. So I'm gonna cut a straight line. I've got two layers here. When I pull this off, I do most of the time make sure that I get both layers all the way through. I'm gonna cut a one and a half inch strip. And from here, I'm actually going to cut across here. And then I'll turn this without try, trying not to move it too much. And I'm gonna cut into one and a half inch squares. So hopefully I don't make any mistakes. I usually cut the biggest piece first and then go smaller. So I cut six, four and a half. Okay, so see on the ruler right there where that white is poking up? You want to tilt it. Just that little degree will make a difference, especially on this block. Square to square is actually my least favorite thing to do. So those are my A's. So I will label them with my alphabetes. My B's, I need 16 one inch squares. So from here, I'm gonna iron this again to get it flat. And because this is directional, and okay, so I do wanna show you, okay, I starched this. It's a layer cake. So you can see this is shorter than this. Oopsie, oops. So that's longer and this is shorter and it's because I starched. So from here, I think I'm gonna need two one inch strips. So I will put my ruler kind of right next to the design to get it straight. Because I'm a little bit OCD like that. And then I'm gonna cut a two inch piece. I'm gonna move this. So again, we need 16 one and a half inch squares. So instead of cutting two one inch strips and subcutting, I'm gonna turn it sideways. I'm gonna cut the one inch this way. I'm gonna lift the ruler off. Oops, didn't work. Put them back together. And I'm gonna cut this way. I'm gonna to cut towards myself, which I know you're not supposed to do, but I do. So I really, let's see, so I need eight. Let's see, so we're gonna do one inch. So I'll start at the six inch. So this should give me 12. Or more than that, let me see. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. We need 16. So from here, I'm not gonna get enough, but I'll get almost enough. So I'll throw this one out. 
So I really needed three strips, but that's okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Oh, I do get enough. I just need one more. And then I need a, those are my bees. And put them on my design board. Any which way. And then my C, I need, or those are my C's actually. I need a one and a half inch square for my B. So I'll actually just cut that from, from the bottom. So I'll just cut a little, little piece off. And then I have all of this left over for another project. And one thing we're going to work on today is directional fabric. So we have everything cut. Won't this have your corners on the diagonal? Well, we'll see. We will see what happens when we do this. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do square and a square, which is what this is. We're going to do one to start. So I'm going to put a fabric A down, and I'm going to show you a couple different things you can do. We will need our friction pin, and I'm going to test, I'm going to show you glue, glue, and pin. So the first option, I'm going to do pins. So I'm going to put this on here this way. And it's going to go up. So that's fine. We're going to do, add one real quick. And I'm going to pin. And we'll see how accurate the, the most accurate method is the paper. So here, I'm going to put one pin. We're going to go to the sewing machine with an open toe foot and I'm going to try to go right from one edge to the other edge. So it looks pretty good. Okay, but if you look right here. I didn't get all the way to the edge. If you look at my stitches, I veered off a little bit. So I'm going to fix that. Because if, when I press, see how much bigger it is over here? It's not one and a half, it's not one and a half now. It's like one and it's got extra. So I'm going to go back and correct that. Trim a quarter inch away. And I'm actually going to try to leave the ironing board up here for this whole thing because it's going to be a lot of back and forth. So I'm going to actually just put these over here. Move this. And I'm going to just leave this kind of over here. And then it'll make it a lot easier to see everything. So from here, I'm going to set my seam by letting it just sit about five seconds. Press to one side. Now, because I did that second stitch, my press open is not going to work as good. But that's okay. We're going to still do it. Okay, we do have a question. Why not make squares of square and a square larger and cut down? Because it's really hard to do that because when you start cutting, you don't get those exact quarter inches right here. So I haven't found that method to work. So we're going to try the pin. We're going to do this whole thing and we're going to pin the whole thing. Now I'm going to look and if I do that, we've got stuff going up horizontal and stuff going vertical. So we don't want that. We want to do it this way and it will look like that. Now, this is the scientific method that Kimberly Jolly uses at home. 
I literally do this so that I know it's going the right direction. So I just um, literally put them on there, see if it works. Okay, I'm gonna pin this again. And it's really important to make sure this is lined up and this is lined up. So you shouldn't see the white below the blue. And if I flip it over, I shouldn't see the blue underneath the white. Okay, so from here, it's kind of, okay, we're going to do this one. And I did the same thing. I didn't get all the way to that point. So I'm going to do it again. Same thing. And let's see, then we're gonna press open. And this is 90% of the time, well actually no it's not. When most of the, what I like to use is the square and a square paper. So we're gonna develop this in more sizes like one inch, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, et cetera, et cetera. But until then, I will use the pin method. So I've got that. Now I've got to add two more. I literally do these one at a time, just like this. I, it's just easier. And I'm less likely to make a mistake if I do it this way. If I try to look, oh, it goes sideways, et cetera, et cetera, I tend to make mistakes. So from here, maybe I'll put two pins. So I really don't want that to move. So I will sew again. Hopefully this time we can sew on the line and not off the line. And the reason I'm not adding two at a time, like the reason I'm not doing this at the same time as this, is I feel they're too close. Now, if it was a bigger one, like three inch, I would do two corners at one time, but this I just feel is too small. Let's see, I've never seen you set the seam step. So what does that do? Okay, so when you set the seam, it just, when you turn, when you push your next seam, it's gonna be like flatter and it's gonna go easier and less bumpy. So from here, got one left. And we're gonna make four of these, but we're gonna do it different ways. So there's that. So pinning, this is, I feel like in these really small pieces, you gotta kinda really pin. Oops, and I didn't draw my line. So here we go. Okay, I'm gonna show you not setting the seam and the difference here. So if I go here and I just do this, watch. It's just not as pretty. It just, you just get a better result when you set your seam first. And I am gonna let that really sit there. Okay, from here, I'm gonna look at it and see. How it looks. Okay, so actually, yeah. Okay, one and a half. So there's the line and the line and you can see all that is extra. And I'm gonna do that on all four sides because these never come out exactly right. 
and this will make it a little bit more accurate. But the question is, you know, if you make it bigger and cut it down, I have tried and tried that and I've never gotten it to work. So, so there is my pinning method. Now, it's not a hundred, it's not one and a half. I mean, you see that dip right there. So it's not perfect. So we're going to try another method. So that's one. I'm going to show you actually four methods. I'm going to I'm going to throw in a fourth with a pad of paper and I'm going to make my own paper. So this is method one. I'll put it right here. Method two is going to be okay. Now it doesn't matter which way they go because as long as each square goes the same way because you can rotate them. So it doesn't matter. So this one I'm going to add. Let's see. We're going to add this. And this is what's fun about being in your sewing room. You can make up your own mind. Like one day you can do pins, one day you can do glue, one day you can do this glue. You can do whatever you want. One day you can do paper. So this is a sew line pin. It's been around forever and it's glue. So I'm gonna just put a little piece of glue. Now that glue is gonna stay there. So if I put it over here, I'm cutting that off anyway, right? So what I need to do now is actually set it with the, so it's going to take my uh, line away. So I'll draw my line again. So if you're doing a big project, you could do, you could glue all of them, set them, draw the line, and then look, it's not going to really move. So I'm going to do, let's see, this one. Just keep the glue, if possible, keep the glue in this little section because, ta-da, very little glue is left. So if I look, let's see, you, you'll see just a tiny bit. Nope, see, I cut all the glue off. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing. Ooh, I'm gonna burn myself too. That'll, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. Ooh, I just burned myself. Um, do you use a different weight thread? I always use 50 weight in the top and I always use 50 weight in the bottom. The color I use most often is color 2000. Ever since Kimberly planned her blocks a couple of weeks ago, I've started doing that so I make sure my directions are the same. Yay! Okay, so even there, look, I just did that glue method. You can see right there, that's not accurate. Look at that. That is not straight, because I've got white coming out here. So this is not even lined up. So I got a more accurate result first time with the glue. Now this one, I mean with the pin. Okay, this time I'm gonna try this. Okay, that's the right direction. So I'm gonna glue it. And I'm going to set it with the iron. Okay, that line is ridiculous. Look at that. That's not straight at all. I just, I don't think I drew the line, so that is not good. I'm going to redo that stitch. I did not cut, I did not do that straight. I think I didn't draw the line, but I don't always draw the line at home. So, cut that off, set my seam, don't burn myself. That really did hurt, actually. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you know when April Low Volume will ship? It, um... It is going to be a couple of weeks. One of the SKUs is out. One of the SKUs didn't arrive. I am a beginner, so it's helpful. I've already experienced wonky squares. Oh, yes. I do wonky squares all the time. This is not ironing very good. Okay. So from here, I'll do my little scientific method. That looks good. And this glue is, um, it's not very expensive, but I rarely do this method, rarely. 
I'm just showing you a different way because it's fun to do a block and do it four different ways and see which one we're going to get the best result with. I already know the answer, but um, we'll see what happens on camera because you never know. So it just, it doesn't come off. And then we're going to sew this. Trim. Press to one side. Press open. This one is not coming out very accurate, I can already tell. But I don't do this as often as a pin, so that's probably why. I guess once you do it a lot, it might work better. Y'all are probably thinking, gosh, it's going to take him really forever to do these. Yes, it is. Okay. So, just set it. I mean, I guess you don't have to do the ironing part. I just feel like it won't, it will move less. And I can tell that I didn't stitch directly on that line, so I'm going to actually do it again. It just doesn't look very good. And set my seam, press open. Now, we did have a question on um, pressing towards the dark versus pressing open. And this quilt, we're doing open because of the final layout of the quilt. If you're doing a different layout, you could press to one side and... Deborah actually pressed all of hers to one side, so you can do whatever works for you. Kayleen says, I love Fridays with FQS. Thank you. Oh, thank you for watching. Okay, I can tell this one is poo-poo. So, I'm going to cut it down. Look at that. It's like, that's like, hello, Wave Central. So, I'm going to put this ruler on there, and I've got the left and the left. And this is all caved in. So this is like an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch off. This is why I don't like these blacks. Now this is an extra step that you do not have to do. It's just, I do it. And now that one, I've got a big old chunk at the bottom that needs to come off. So, pinning, gluing, Pretty similar. This one's more accurate though. Okay, now I tried this this weekend. This is Acorn Precision Piecing Seam Align Glue. I'm gonna show you later in the live stream what I used it on and talk about my results with it. I think this is a nice product. Um, I like it, but it's not something I would use daily because it would get way too expensive, but it really worked with my dinosaur quilt. So if I'm working with really small, if you're working with something that's like three inch or just tiny, tiny pieces, one inch pieces, this is great. If you're working with like a big block, I wouldn't use it. So I, I will use this, but I will use it mainly when I have small, small pieces. And I did like it. I just, you know, I don't have to have it. It's kind of one of those things that. So what I do like about it is it's got this little tip so that it goes back, it goes on and off, and so it doesn't get clogged up. And I've seen what I did is I got on YouTube and I watched a couple of videos. So some I'm going to show you different ways you can do it. Some people do this. Now you see I'm putting the glue where I'm going to be cutting off also. Now there's that. Now you can draw the line, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna draw the line and sew. But make sure you put the glue kind of hidden where you're gonna cut off or within a seam. So this is, this does stay, um, this does stay when you use this glue, it's, it's gonna stay stronger than this. So from here I will trim the quarter inch, set my seam, 
press open. Try not to burn myself. Because I do have like 50 blocks to make this weekend, so I don't have time to burn myself. Now there is a second product that goes with this that is different, and I'm gonna demo that another week. And it's something that I would not use because I feel like I get the results with my clapper. So I don't, it's something that I don't think you need. Okay, so from here, when you do this, guess what? You're gonna have a tiny bit of glue. So that might get on your nerves. Okay, now look how inaccurate that is. I'm gonna have to trim that down. That looks bad. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. But this time I'm gonna set it. So when I watch different YouTube videos, some people just go with it and some people set the, the glue. When you set the glue, if you do too much, you're gonna have big dots that come through the other side. So that's good, I didn't do too much glue. So just the same stuff. Okay, let's see, does the glue gum up your needle? It has not. What drew you to that particular sewing machine? Um, Lisa Bonjean and Lisa Alexander. So I did a retreat with Lisa Alexander years ago and this is what she used and I kept kind of staring at her machine like how is she going so fast? So I bought one and then Lisa Bonjean also started talking about them and I like the machine because first of all, it's inexpensive. You do not need a $3,000 machine to sew. It goes fast, and that's the most important thing because I need everything to go fast. And you can see this is like off. See that hanging off? There's a little bit hanging off. It's okay. And then this time I'm just gonna wing it with my eye and not draw the line because I'm tired of drawing the line. And at home I don't draw the line too much. Okay, can you grab me a square and a square two inch pad? I'm going to do, I'm gonna draw my own papers. And let's see, press open. Hopefully I haven't forgot to press any of these open. Ooh, it's hot. And you really shouldn't have your iron over your mat below it, but to make it, there's no way I could do it without. So I'm gonna do one more. see if this is the right way yeah well I'm gonna glue it first so I would definitely do dots and not I would definitely do dots when you do it and not drag your glue or it's gonna be too much so I think that's the wrong way let's see this way yeah and then from there set the glue and when I watch the YouTube videos, you can just Google acorn precision piecing and see how different people use it. I will do a full demo on it in a future video. So stitch on that line. Cut. Do you have a pencil? Sorry, I don't know if there's one under here. I don't see one. Let's see. This is, I'm about to burn myself, I can tell. So when you have to pull this open and you've got that glue, sometimes you have to do it with your hands because of the glue. Okay, so now I'm gonna trim this down. That is a hot mess of a hot mess. That is not good. So you can see that even though I used precision glue, pressing, using pins is my be best method. Actually, it's my second best method, but I used glue, precision, it didn't come out precisely. But of course, I'm new at using this product, so I'm sure I'll get better. It was
was fun to use last weekend because it was just something different. So from here, I'm just using this the lines on my ruler to trim it down to one and a half. So anything that's extra is off of there. Okay, so that's three different ways you can use. You can do pins, which is the most accurate for me. You can use sew line glue pen, or you can use this acorn precision piecing seam align glue. Now, I'm gonna do the best method ever, but I do have to read, I do have to recut some fabrics to do it. Okay. So I'm not gonna use these, let's see. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut a square that's like two and a half. This is one and a half, but I'm just, I'm, basically at this point I'm winging it. So I'm gonna cut a one and a half inch square. It's too big, that's fine. And I'm gonna cut two, I think this will be big enough, let me see. I'm gonna make my own paper. So this is two inch, but we're gonna make a one inch. So I'm gonna cut two two inch squares. And, oh sorry. I don't have it on screen, sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this on the diagonal in a little bit, but I'm gonna make my own paper. So I love this square and square paper. We're gonna come out with new sizes soon, but you, you could do this with any paper, but if you pull out printer paper from your printer, when you start pulling the paper off the, your, your fabric off the paper, your paper's gonna rip. So you need a thinner paper. So I'm gonna do my own paper. And by doing it, I'm gonna draw it myself. So I cannot use a friction pen because it's gonna disappear with heat. So I'm gonna draw first a one and a half inch square. And I do this with other things too, if I want it, if I really wanna be accurate. Cause you know, some days you probably care more than others. So, so here's a one and a half inch square right there. So I'm gonna trim all this off cause we don't need all this. Okay, so one and a half divided by two is three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna draw a line at the three quarter inch on all sides. So this is just me making this up as I go, literally. But it's gonna, you're gonna see how much more accurate it comes out. Fridays are a must see TV day for me. Kimberly in the morning and Lori Holt in the afternoons. Perfect way to start the weekend. Yes, Lori Holt has a YouTube channel. I actually don't know what she's filming today. I forgot to ask her. But I watch it at night too. I watch it after Dateline. I usually like it, usually publishes after. This is actually not right. What I'm doing right now is not right. Yeah, I didn't do that right. Okay. Yay, just a race. So this is why we're making paper for you so you don't have to do this. <laughs> so actually I need to draw a quarter inch inside all the way around because it's going to finish at one inch. Yeah, it's going to finish at one inch. I have to look. About a clapper. I got mail that is it is in out of stock, but when I try to order, it's out of stock because they only sent me like 10% of my order. So I'm just waiting on more to come in. Now that's where you need to draw your three quarters of a line on that. Oh wait, no, you wanna do half an inch. So this is, okay, it's gonna finish at this size. It's gonna unfinish at this size. And this is why you buy the paper instead of making it yourself because it's a pain in the butt. So I'm gonna mark a line at half inch. Oh my gosh, did y'all see that Melinda and Bill Gates are getting a divorce? I almost cried. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna cry. I was devastated. Why I care, I have no idea. Okay, I'm drawing a line from this dot to this dot. Basically, I'm creating my own paper. It's probably not the best thing to demo because it's a real pain in the butt to do. 
but we're gonna do it for today just just for the fun of it okay so from here I'm gonna cut one of these in half and I sorry cut those in half and I have these just um, I just guessed a size because I don't have the paper so from here I'm gonna actually fold on the diagonal lines and the one thing that's going to happen here that I don't like is this lead is going to get in my fabric which is why I don't really this is why I need to do the paper so I'm going to put this here this I am going to glue for sure pull this back trim a quarter inch away on that side put this down re-thread my machine that came unthreaded I don't know why it came unthreaded let's see do you know when the seam so easy guides will be back in stock okay can you pull up what seam so easy is because I don't off the top of my head know what that is and then I'll tell you I think I know what it is. Yes, that will be July. Do you, um, any idea when strawberries and rhubarb is due in? It has not shipped yet. So I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna sew on that drawn line. And I'm gonna put my seam allowance to 1.5. It's, yeah. Now with this method, I can't press open. So I'll just go here, press to one side, let it sit. So that is the disadvantage on this one. We'll go back over here, fold on this line, trim a quarter inch away. Has the Primitive Gatherings quilt along started? No, it is waiting on, we're waiting on the fabric. So Lisa promises she will not start that sew along until everyone has their fabric and has not arrived yet. So I'm gonna make sure these all go the same way before I do this. So I'm gonna put that there. You could glue it if you want. Turn it over and we're gonna stitch on that diagonal line. So I'm probably, this is probably not a demo I should have done, but this is the kind of stuff I do at home. I love watching you. I watched your Jelly Roll Jam video like 400 times when I made my first baby blankets. Aww. And I watch every Friday. Yay, thank you for watching. I still crack up that y'all watch me because this is basically what I do at home. What does pressing the glue parts together do for you? It um, holds it so when you get to the machine, it ha doesn't shift. So if you're doing like a big project and you need a bunch of stuff done all at once, it is, is actually helpful. And I'll kind of show you what I mean um, when we get to the section on my dinosaur quilt. Now from here, I can't just cut this because I don't know which way. So that looks like the right way. So now I will cut that in half. Turn that over. Now you can see I chopped off part of my paper, but that's okay. Are you going to talk about Layla Boutique's new block of the month? I am. Next week, I have 40 blocks that I'm going to make this weekend, and I will bring them all to show you next week. It is beautiful, and the best thing about it is it is easy. And another good thing about it is we're publishing the book for it, so the instructions will be fabulous. I have all my fabric starched and ready. And Moda's new fabric release released about 30 minutes before we started this live stream. So throughout the day, we will be loading all of the new Moda. And I just threw away what I needed, hold on. So you're gonna see new Moda on the um, coming soon page today. And next week you will see new Riley Blake. And we put up Free Spirit last week. I 
I've only received one of the sew by rows. Okay, the next one is shipping next week. Two of the fabrics were out. They came back and I'm gonna actually show you my blocks next week also. Good morning from Hamburg. It's 425 and I have a cup of coffee. Oh, yay. Okay, so from here, sorry, I'm gonna move all this. I'm gonna turn this over and my original one and a half inch line is where I'm gonna cut. Now, cutting with paper, it'll dull your blade just a little bit, but I still do it all the time. I'd rather have dull blades and more accurate blocks than sharp blades. Okay. Now look at that perfect block. That is so much more perfect than these. Look at that. Straight edges. Oh my gosh, that's so fulfilling. That's like crack. So fulfilling. I am so impressed Kimberly made her own paper. I do it all the time, it's so fun. Can you use a one and a half by three inch flying geese and cut down to one and a half by two and a half? Yes, you can. You just have to be careful. I would cut the width and then the length. Yay, okay, so now, okay. So this is, we're almost done. I know I'm probably driving all of y'all crazy because I'm taking forever on this block, okay. So here we go. I'm going to lay out my block. And I'm going to just pay attention to the direction. So, let's see. And then we've got our whites. I have one extra. I don't know why. Oh, I do know why. Okay. So from here, I've got all my little straight little thingies going the same way. I'm going to use a quarter inch foot, go back to 2.0 stitch length and chain piece down here. So I'll do that real quick. When do you choose paper piecing? When I have the paper that I need, I will always go with paper piecing, foundation paper piecing. Now, regular paper piecing, I, I don't usually do. What kind of sewing machine do you recommend? I would go to Office Depot and buy one. Just sit in on them and get a comfortable one. The one that I use at home is now discontinued, and I can't remember what company it's from, but it's discontinued. And when I go to the sewing machine stores, all the chairs are ugly. So I go for pretty and comfortable. So from here, I'm going to open these up and hope that that hit. And it kind of didn't right there. Like that's a little chopped off. Oh, that's way chopped off. Oh, no, that is a crime. Okay, we got to redo these. Both of these are a mess, see? Let's see. Okay, so this one I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna have to just deal with that. This one, I don't know what that is. That's a hot mess of a eighth of, look how much that's over. That's like an eighth of an inch over. My stitches are here. So I'm just gonna pull this out. And I don't know which method this was. Maybe I should have marked them. So I'll clip seams on one side and then just try to pull the thread on the other side. What is the weight of the paper? I don't know and um, it's, I don't know. Do you start your layer cakes? Yes, but if I need the full 10 inch, you will not have enough. So from here, I'm actually gonna just fold this quarter inch, move it to where it matches there and it's gonna make the block uneven, but it's gonna still look better. Let's see. So from here, it matches. From here, I had to lay it off center. 
So I'm going to iron these real quick, and then we'll add the others. What is foundation versus paper piecing? Paper piecing is traditionally just when you have like a big thing and you're, you're making like a big owl or something. And then they call foundation paper piecing kind of what I did. But I think they're kind of foundation paper piecing is the same thing. They're both the same. English paper piecing is what's different. Have you tried sewing slower? Nope, that's not my style. Do you like your platinum juki? Yes, I love it. Do you ever put a pin in the sewing line to help you hold it straight at the end? Yes. And you could also use a stiletto to do that. Riley Blake bolt, bolts, are they 10 or 15? If it's a regular collection, they're 15. If it's a basic, they sell them in 10 yard bolts. What size do the papers come? For square and a square, we have two inch, three inch, and four inch. Okay, so let's put this back. And then we're gonna add this last one. I'm doing the coriander Christmas block of the month and I'm noticing some of my blocks are coming out to the exact size of 18 and a half. Let's see, do I need to redo? No. They'll, it'll all work out. You're going to see when I finish this, it's not going to be three and a half. It's going to be a little bit off. I starched a baby quilt. I'm going to wash it. So I wonder if the starch will come out. Yes. How big is your design board? I have all the sizes. The one that I have here, I think is... 15 inches, 14 inches. I was one inch off. I use all sizes though at my house. Okay, I do wanna show you one thing. When you look here, this is the one that I used the paper on. You can see this ink or lead came through. So that's why. You really shouldn't do that, but I do it anyway sometimes. If I can't get something to work, I'm gonna make it work somehow. Where are the questions you answer? I don't see the questions. So, there's a way that you can see the questions. You can have chat on or off, and they come up on my screen where I can read them. But I think that there's an option on YouTube on the bottom left. If you're on Facebook though, you won't see them. Um, but there's like a little button on YouTube on the bottom left, I think, where you can like click it. Do you know when to cut larger than cut down? Just, I, how do you know? I just say it's experience. And I think I go a little too far. I think I do a lot of steps extra that I don't need to do. But it makes me feel good, so I do it. But it's, a lot of steps I do are totally not necessary. But I think everybody, when they sew, you know, you come up with something that works for you. I like my stuff to look really nice, so I'm super OCD about it. What is the name of the new Layla Block of the Month? Rose Blossom or Rose Bloom, one of the two. What will you do when Socialites is finished? I will sit here and show you stuff I sew at home, and I will come up with uh, tutorials, but I'm not gonna do a tutorial every week. So from here, sorry about that noise. Luckily, everything is still going the right way. I'm going to put these right sides together. Cut this and I'm gonna pin each intersection. So try to make sure it's lined up. Watching in the Smoky Mountains where I attend Mountain Quilt Fest and I loved it. Oh, I haven't heard of that. I'm doing binding and enjoying catching up with my quilty friends. Yay, yeah, y'all can all make friends in the chat. I'm horrible when I'm on a live stream, I never chat. It's, I don't, I don't ever know what to say. Oh my goodness, I just started, it started snowing. We're, we're going camping right after the live stream. No, oh yeah, no, I'd be out on that. I'd be like, oh, my stomach hurts. I can't go. Okay, 
Okay, so those match, those look good. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this side too. How do you choose how much to cover the fabric to leave when you want to cut? I cover what I'm cutting, does that make sense? How much fabric to leave? I kind of do the math in my head and if it's too complicated, I'll write it out on a piece of paper if I'm, con if I'm really concerned, but I guess. I tried triangle paper for the first time. I don't think it would make such a big difference, but it really did. I'm definitely going to try some paper for special projects, and if there's ever a paper for square to square, I'm all the way there for every size. That one was so hard. Yes, that is. Do you use steam when pressing after you have sewn? Yes, I always use steam. If I have the paper on, you're not really supposed to use steam, so I try not to, but I don't always follow the rules. I bought the Lori Holt Red Sampler. Do I need to wash it? I would not. I would starch your fabric or I would not starch, but I would, I would definitely not wash it. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew this. It looks good. Okay, so now I'm gonna kind of move everything off of here. I will keep this. This machine is heavy. That's the one downside to that machine is it is 5,000 pounds. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a final press and I'm gonna put this where it should go and I won't burn myself, yay! So from here, I'm going to set one seam, press toward the inside, there's less bulk there, so it's easier to press toward the inside, so just let it sit about five seconds. Set the other seam on the other side. Oh, that didn't press open right there. I'm gonna leave it though. I'm gonna just leave that. Let's see, I'm gonna leave that one to the side, it'll be fine. Press in. I'm trimming 196 flying geese for the Zen Chic quilt sky. That quilt is really pretty. Morning from Greater Kansas City. Thank you for holding my order bank card that got hacked. You are all dears to hold my order. Yay. Watching from Baton Rouge before my daughter's graduation from LSU with her masters. Oh my gosh. I used to go to dance conventions in that city. And there was LSU everywhere. Will the layer cake be enough for the bright side quilt in the sew sampler box? I think so. You might have to, yeah, I think so. It's not gonna be for your background, but for your blocks, for your colored pieces, it should be enough. I just started searching my fabric, starching my fabric. Is there a problem if I mix starched and unstarched? It's gonna shrink differently when you wash it, so I would probably not mix. Now from here, I would definitely have this clapper on here until it was 100% no longer hot. But we don't have time to do that today. So I'm gonna move this. And I'm gonna trim this block. And I'm gonna straighten this because it's gonna drive me crazy. Okay. So because I kinda trimmed as I went, it's not gonna be as bad. But we're gonna see. I'm just gonna put this on the edge hold it down and get these little strings off. Now again, this is optional. You don't have to do this. I'm quilting and stitching all weekend because my husband is going hunting. Yay, oh, that's fun. Kevin doesn't ever go anywhere, but I still stitch and sew all weekend. He's just used to it. Let's see. Mother's Day is this weekend. What are you guys doing for Mother's Day? I hope y'all have something planned. I haven't planned mine yet. My favorite restaurant is downtown, but I don't know if I wanna mess with going downtown. So here's my three inch block. It's supposed to be three and a half, and it actually came out to three and a half. That's a, that's a miracle. That's a Friday miracle. It actually came out to exactly three and a half. So that's pretty good for today. Epic North says, hey, mommy. Hey, you're supposed to be in school. What are you doing? Get off of here. He's so funny. That's my little baby. 
Okay, so I'm going to, let's see, move my chair. And we're gonna chat a little bit and then I have a ton of stuff I've sewn that I wanna show. So we have some super chats that Piggy wants to say thank you to Mary Lou Lyon, Valeria Bauer, she's my number one fan, Sally Johnson, such a great way to start my weekend and happy Mother's Day weekend to all the moms here and at FQS, thank you. Kathy, thank you Kimberly and FQS for all you do. Happy Mother's Day to you and all the moms out there. Yes, happy Mother's Day. Nadara McAllister, watching your mind work is so interesting. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes um, it's like a wheel going and it can drive my, drive me crazy. Shelly Murphy, what is your all-time favorite quilt pattern? Okay. I really like the Great Granny Squared book and block, and I made one of those this weekend, so I really like that one. From Kim, thanks for being you. Oh, thank you. Susan Phillips, when is the next Socialites going to start? 2022 because those take like nine months to plan. Um, I'm on recess, lunch, two hour break. I just got done. Oh, that's my son. Okay, stop chatting. I will see you tonight. We will watch wrestling together, but <laughs> you need to get off the chat. I'm in the UK where we have Mother's Day in March. Oh, you do? Mother, Happy Mother's Day in March. Angela says, do you start your backing fabric? Yes. And then Cecilia says, is Sew by Row sashing separate than the block of the month? It comes in, um, you get the sashing parts each month, and then at the end you get the, the all the rest of the sashing. So in, by the last month you will have all of the fabric for the top and the binding, so it will be included. Any idea when boudoir will come in? Um, I don't know, for all the fabric dates, Everything is kind of like all over the place right now, so I don't have any like exact dates. Lori says, for Mother's Day, my family is coming over for a barbecue dinner that my sons are doing, and then we will play cards. Oh, I won't be able to talk to Lori on Sunday. Are you going to watch 2020? I either will watch Dateline or 2020 tonight. My normal plan is we order fajitas, except I ordered them last night for some reason. So I'll have to find, I'll maybe order Chewies or something. And then I usually or, watch Dateline and so, and then I watch 2020 on Monday on my Hulu. Will anybody be taking over the journey to Nebula? No. Okay, so we're gonna move to Lori Holt's Red Sampler, Sew Along. I'm gonna grab the bundle and I'm gonna show you some of my blocks. Can I have the white one too? Okay, so we put together these bundles because Lori came up with a sew along recently. This is the one yard bundle and it has the fabric she's using. Now, this will probably not include every single fabric that she uses, but these are the ones she selected to do the one yard bundle of. And there's six. So we've got this bundle, and then we have a fat quarter bundle that I believe has 17 fat quarters. So both of these, when they sell out, they will be available again in September. So basically, I went to Riley Blake and I bought every piece of red and every piece of this bolt. And once they're gone, we will have more in September. But I wanted to let you know we have these now. And we just put them together because so many people asked. So I'm going to show you the blocks that Lori put together on her blog on Monday. So these are her three blocks. She did the center square is the from the Great Granny Squared book on page five. I'm gonna also show you mine in a little bit. On the left is the six inch churn dash block from Farm Girl Vintage, page 19. And on the right is the six inch vintage pinwheel block from the Vintage Christmas book, page 105. So that's her block. Now I'm gonna show you her first her first block individually which is the great granny squared so that's hers and let's see what I did different I think I copied her exactly so I copied her exactly 
This is from this book, except I, let's see it again. I think I changed this fabric. Yeah, I have a different fabric in the center. So, and I'm gonna show you a trick on trimming that in a second and why I love that block and book so much. So that's the first block. And the second block that she did, let's see what hers looks like. Hers is, let's see, that is the vintage pinwheel. Let me see mine and see how much I changed. Okay, so I changed all of the fabrics except the backgrounds. I did not have either one of these fabrics that she had. So I just kind of did the same thing where she went darker and then medium. So I wasn't able to, I didn't have those fabrics, so I just made it work with what I have. And then the next block she did is from Farm Girl Vintage. It's the churn dash block. And let's see, I changed two of the fabrics. So I have a, these two fabrics are different. I didn't have those fabrics or I had already used them or something. So I kind of kept the same. She's gonna be using the gingham a lot. So I'm gonna now lay out all of my blocks from the farm, from the red sampler quilts along and you'll just need a couple of books all the information is on her blog and she's going to be posting three blocks every monday so this weekend i'll have to start sewing next week's and then i, I do have one other tip to show you so my blocks um, are a little bit lighter than hers like a little bit a little bit lighter than hers but we just started this just very recently so I've got a lot of blocks done and this really honestly takes me maybe two hours a week maybe usually an hour I do have one tip that I forgot to show you so I'm gonna put these up and then show you what I do here show you two tips so my two tips for the week on this this is my ruler I couldn't find it last night I was like where is my ruler I love this ruler I couldn't find it last night Okay, so two tips for you, because I'm all about showing you what I do at home. And when you look at this book, it tells you to cut this rectangle a certain size. So I just take whatever size that is, make it bigger, and just cut two pieces. So you can see this side's crooked, this side's crooked. I basically put them right sides together, cut a straight line, and put this for this. Now what I'll do, this needs to be two and a half. So I'll put my two and a half inch ruler on, I'll put the center of that ruler, which is the white line on here. And then you flip it, you don't even have to think because you've got this two and a half inch ruler. And from here, you're gonna have straight units that are perfectly straight, except that my, I didn't do a good job on my plaid. So then you just do this. You just take this ruler. So I do strip sets like this all the time. So instead of cutting eight pieces, sewing four seams, I cut one seam, I sewed one seam and just subcut all that. So you get much more accurate because you're accurate this way and this way. So that's how I do strip sets and that's how I do these blocks so fast. I used half square triangle paper here, which let's see, this block I used H200. And then this is the CGR2112 ruler that I actually didn't know existed until a couple of weeks ago. And I've been using it like crazy and last night I was like looking for it everywhere. So that's a way to save time instead of cutting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, cut two strips, cut the two sides, and then just start chopping them. So that's my tip on this block, which I'm actually going to save these because I might be able to use them. I'm going to put that over there. Now this one, this is why I love this block so much. This block she has written where you put it into, can you zoom out a tiny please? Thanks. Okay, so I'm trying to try to think of how to say it. So she, this, it's a strip set here, a strip set here, a strip set here, a strip set here, a strip set, a strip set, a strip set. So you sew all those into sets, sew them together. And then you add this and this, 
and then you add this and this. So you can trim this down to 12 and a half so you have a perfect block, which is, I'm all about that. So you can either use the CGR 12 ruler or Lori has her own ruler, which is STTI 5532 and they're pretty similar. So hers, you would put, let's see, I'm gonna show you two different ways. You can make any ruler work. What you're doing, you take this center line and this center line, and you hit one, two, three, four, one, two, you hit it, and then you trim all four sides. With the Creative Grids ruler, it's the same exact thing, except their line is white. So you would trim here, let's see, so you put white. I'm gonna show you another way to do it also. So you line up the white lines because that's the center and then you would have it all chopped off. But if you don't have that ruler, this is what you would do. 12 and a half divided by two is six and one eighth, six and one quarter. So I would never just put the six and one quarter ruler on here and trim because you're gonna have a bad result. Don't ask me why I know that, I just do. So instead, if you don't have a square ruler, I'm gonna show you what to do. This is six and a half. So six and a quarter is a quarter inch away. You put that quarter inch line right there. Draw a line. Use it. You know, using one of these pens, it's going to disappear with heat later. You turn it, you do the same thing. So you put the quarter inch. Let's see. It's it's much harder to do than it's harder to to, to do than to say. So that's why I use those. This is going to take four times as long as if I was just using a. But I always mark it out because I want to make sure it's right before I do it. So I'm just lining up this and this. And then the last one, the same thing. So it just takes longer, but you don't have to have a ruler to do this if you don't want to. From here, I would check to make sure that I was at 12 and a half. So I would make sure it was 12 and a half both ways before I cut. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut this, but I'm gonna do it the way I normally would. But you know, you don't, when you start quilting, you don't have to have all the fancy rulers. You don't have to have all the things. You can make it work. So hopefully this fits right on top of the thing, but I'm gonna look at my line, my white line, and my white line, and then I'm gonna show you the beauty of this block also, another thing that's so great about it. Now from here, I'm actually going to rotate this. I don't wanna cut that whole thing. And when I iron, all these little marks will come off. So if I was at home, I wouldn't have done any of those lines. I'm just showing you how, if you don't have a fancy ruler. Now, the best thing about the way she designed this is These points are not a quarter inch away. They're more like five eighths of an inch. So when you sew this into a seam, you don't have to match up any points. It floats. And that's how she designed it. And I did fussy cut that in the center, that little heart. Okay, so now I'm gonna answer questions on all of these blocks. I know I just did a whole lot. What ruler, what are your favorite rulers? Okay, so this is two by two and a half by 12 and a half, it's CGR 212. I use this one, I use all of my square rulers from two and a half to six and a half creative grids. And these are the two rulers I use the most. Six and a half by 24 and a half. And six and a half by 18 and a half. And then I have a couple of square rulers. I have like nine and a half, 12 and a half. And then I have like a gigantic one that I've, I never use. Great to see demos using different tools. Very much appreciate. Thank you. Why are there different sizes? Will the quilt be different sizes? Or are you just showing us all you can do with smaller blocks or all bigger blocks? 
So Lori has it designed. If you look on her blog, all the information is there. It's beinmybonnetco.blogspot.com. She's going to give you a finishing at the end. It's going to refer to one of her books for the finishing on how you lay it out. And you can use um, several of her books, use a combination of the six and the 12. So there'll be more information on that like further along. Could you someday do an explanation of what a light, medium, and dark fabric? Yes. Do you snack while you sew? Um, I usually have tea. I usually always have a tea. There's usually a tea in my bedroom, in the kitchen, in my office. There's teas all over the house. It drives Kevin crazy. I think it's hilarious. He gets so mad. He's like, why are there teas everywhere? Just, I just do it to drive you crazy. Because maybe he's watching. Kathy says, Kimberly and Lori Holt, your blogs are beautiful and inspire me to continue increasing my skills as a newer quilter. Thank you, Kimberly, for great instruction and happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you for watching. How do I sign up for the Fat Quarter Bundle Club? Um, you just go online and we have a couple of them. We have them by manufacturer. We also have some for um, like low volume. You just sign up and then you'll get, if you sign up with a credit card, we'll bill your credit card. If you sign up with PayPal, we'll send you an invoice that you have to approve each week. We'll be getting both April and May for Sew by Row or everything pushed back. Okay, so we did send a newsletter out, so check that so that you'll see all the info, but you're just going to be getting April. And then May hasn't all arrived yet. Which clapper is the super wide one? Okay, so these are the two clappers that are not in stock right now. They're by Riley Blake. They're the original ones that came out in the quilt world. These are two new ones that are available that are from Gypsy Quilter. So there's only two sizes of each, just select the larger. I don't know the exact size off the top of my head. Will you be videoing the 2021 Designer Mystery? No, we don't do videos on the Designer Mysteries. Shh, I'm watching while I'm at work. I love all your tips. Oh, thank you. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you, now that I've shown you all my red blocks, I'm gonna show you serendipity. And so if you check on Monday, I did a tutorial on how to make this block. And I was able to finish the row last night. I stayed up super late. That's probably why I couldn't sleep because I was so like amped up from sewing. So I got all of this done last night, including, I had everything cut, but I had to do all the house square triangles. So I got that done and I'm just keeping everything in my little bag because it keeps it nice and flat. Let's see, I think I had it folded like this. And then I'm going to show you blocks by our sample makers. So the first set of blocks for row four is Confection Batiques by Kate Spain and they're sewn by Angel. They look really good. And all of the fabrics that I'm showing you now, we do have in stock. So that is a batik look. And you can see she alternated, let's see, her, um, this is her accent, this piece right here. So that's the first set. The second one are Blooming Bunch by Maureen McCormick. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Nancy made these. And so she also used green. Green was my accent. And so she'll obviously separate these two. I kind of have all these together, but they would all be separated. Sorry, I look better like this. And she's using a Bella solid. So that's another sample makers blocks, just because, um, I want you guys to see stuff in different fabrics, just to see different looks. This is Jan Paddock fabric, Mill Creek Garden. 
and she used brown as her accent. And her blocks are really pretty. So those are Carrie's blocks. And this is a free sew along to benefit Make-A-Wish, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit, but if you feel the need to donate to a charity, we have a donation link to Make-A-Wish. We are at $73,669. So exciting, and we granted a wish, and we do have some updated photos to show. And this looks amazing. So this is American Gatherings Fabric by Lisa Bonjean. Teresa sewed these, and if you want to check it out on Lisa Bonjean's blog, she is going to be having an American Gathering sew along that is a combination of 20 flag blocks. The flag blocks will be free. The setting is in a book, and I will be sewing along with that. And then we have one more set of blocks to show that are modern. These are by Kate and the collection is What Knots by Ruby Star Society. It's a combination of designers that designed the fabric. And these are her six blocks. And now I have a free quilt to show you because not only do we give you free blocks and a free quilt, we also give you free alternate settings. So this is called flower basket bonus mini quilt. So this is a completely free pattern. It's designed by Corey Yoder, who's the designer of the fabric for the quilt that's behind me. And you can download this free on our website. We sewed it up. Hold on a second, I dropped something. We sewed this in the Homestead collection. So I'll show it and I'll show it to the front camera in a second. So it's really pretty. It looks totally different than the other quilt. So this is Milestone 4 quilt designed by Corey Yoder. This is the um, Homestead collection and we just used a fat quarter bundle, which is too much, but you'd have a lot left over. Elva sewed it and Mike from mylongarm.com quilted it. And I'm gonna show you, uh, we did the wish for Charlotte last week. And on Sunday, I'm gonna show you pictures of when she um, got the remainder of her wish. So the first part of her wish was going to build a bear. And I showed those photos last week. And then what they did here is they, um, they had her leave the house, they set it up. Um, there is an iPad in there because she will be in the hospital. And you can see that little pink car in the corner. <laughs> And then um, the next one is a picture of her like walking in. She's very stylish, <laughs> she's so cute. And then this next one, um, that's her mom. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. And then we're gonna show a picture of her in her little car. Mommy. It's a video, I guess. And it is so funny because when Kevin and I watched wow. this, Kevin was like, oh my gosh, you she's like gonna go on the street, car. she's gonna go on the street. And watch, she does. I mean, we have four kids, so we know what's about to happen. We're like, oh, and this is about to go crazy. And then she goes right in the street. <laughs> So, so thank you to everyone for donating um we really could not do this without all of your guys support i'm going to answer a couple questions before i go to the next section heather says tuning in from paris france our mother's day is may 30th thanks for the great content kimberly and happy mother's day thank you i learned a lot today thank you what kind of tea are you enjoying oh my gosh so my favorite brand is Farmer's, I always want to say Farmer's Daughter, but it's not, Farmer's Brothers and Lipton. And then two customers sent me tea, and so I, I have to try them. Um, so I'm super excited to try them. But yes, and I like Starbucks tea, but you can't buy that. Um, did you use foundation paper for all of those half square triangles? Y yes, anything you see that I put on this table that I sew at home, always use triangle paper. I never don't use triangle paper, ever. When does Christmas fabric start coming out? So tr traditionally, April, May. Right now, everything is so delayed that this year Christmas fabric is gonna come out a lot later. It is probably gonna be more June, July, but traditionally that is how all the fabric manufacturers do it. They used to come out in June and then they just started moving it up and up. Do the expert sewers get to choose their fabrics? The sample sewers, yes. 
What is the equivalent for the pins that Kimberly uses since Collins was discontinued? Um, we will answer that in the link. I'm trying to think of the number. I can't think of it off the top of my head. I don't know if there's a problem with my brain or what, but I can never figure out which paper size to use for half square triangle. So we do have a chart for free that you can download for free on fatquartershop.com and just search half square triangle cheat sheet or something and it'll come up and it'll tell you the unfinished size, the finished size and what paper to use. So happy to see that wishes can still be granted. Yes, so what Make-A-Wish is doing is they've had to revamp like the whole way they're doing everything. They, flights are not allowed right now. Disneyland and Disney World are not open for Make-A-Wish kids right at this time. And if they go on a out of town, it has to be within a thousand miles. But they're doing a lot of stuff like um, technology stuff for boys is um, becoming common. So I have been using Clover 2501 as a replacement for my pins. And Piggy says thank you to Randy E for the super chat. It says thank you for the tutorials and amazing tips. Thank you for watching. I'm just amazed that you guys watch me. <laughs> um, okay, so the next thing I'm gonna be doing this weekend, I'm so excited, is I'm gonna be putting together my final assembly on my Jolly Bar Sew Along. So these were the blocks for this week. And again, I saved the, the leftovers to make half square triangles and those are already in my Swirling Stars quilt. So I'm actually gonna take this home this weekend and I'm going to sew this all together. And when I come back next week, I will have all of my, I'm just gonna kinda show all of them. I will have all my blocks together and I will have my backing together. And Pat Sloan is actually going to mail me the one that she made out of kitty corn so that you guys can see something totally different. And you can see I'm saving all of my extra half square triangles because I will use them in something. If I don't use them on the back of this quilt, they will be used somewhere, some way, somehow in my house. So this is the Sunday Stroll fabric by Bonnie and Camille. I am using this ruler and so I'm excited that it's almost over because now I get to put it all into a big quilt. So I'm super excited. I'm probably gonna do that tonight actually. And let's see, that uses the Jolly Bar book. All the information on this sew along is on the Jolly Jabber, which is our blog. The only thing you would have to buy is the book, which is only $9.99. And the next block is coming out on Monday and it is the block that goes on the back. And if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You could just do a regular backing, but it's a bonus. And I always like to do a piece block on my back. And you guys have asked how I do it. So I'm kind of showing you um, how I do it because it is kind of what I do. Love your pink shirt. Thank you. Okay, I got a lot of sewing done this week, guys. So get ready because this hurt my back. <laughs> I was about to die. Okay, I'm going to show you. I am making this quilt, which is called My Favorite Color is Moda. I subscribed to the Low Volume Fat Quarter Club and I got all of the fabrics January through March and I used them all up and I need to wait for April to keep going. But this is block six. It finishes at 27 inches. This took forever. I used H450 triangle paper right here and I also used H225 paper so I used triangle paper for this whole thing and my son there's was I think like 80 triangles he pulled all the paper he was so awesome so this is the first block I made the second block I made is and I'm kind of going out of order this is block 10 which is 18 inch finished and I used H450 for this one and I am going out of order on this one because what I'm doing is as I go I'm circling the ones I have done so this weekend I'm gonna be assembling like the pieces that I have done like I'll assemble these three I'll assemble these two I'll assemble these two and then this one I have everything except this one done. 
but I'm gonna start assembling and so I'm kind of doing the ones that are next to each other just so I can keep going because I'm out of fabric but I want to keep going and then these are smaller blocks this was all done on Saturday so these are block 19 they're 9 inch finished and I used four fabrics in each block so I use two fabrics here and two fabrics here and then I alternated and you can see all this fabric is all kind of all over the place but it's gonna look so good when it's done and this is block I think this is block nine and there's three of these now the tip that I just showed you with that 2 by 12 ruler right here did the same thing same exact thing and this is H 300 triangle paper and this is that same except this is three and a half not two and a half but it's the same method I just make the strips about a quarter to half inch larger and just trim down and then these last blocks this is block 13 now what I did here is when the pattern it said to cut at like I don't know 10 inches I cut my squares at 11 inches and then I trimmed this down with the creative grids ruler CGR 9 so I made my hourglasses much bigger and then trimmed down and I had enough on this one to use these two fabrics twice which is fine and then this block I just did normal piecing I mean it's just a if I was doing all three of these blocks in the same color I would have used strip piecing but kind of now I'm down to like the little chunks that are left over so I just did normal piecing here and you can see it's kind of sloppy this one's kind of sloppy it's okay and then this one this is block 12 I used H450 triangle paper and so those are my blocks so these are 17 blocks that I made this weekend and um, so let me know if there's any questions on any of that I know that's like a lot of sewing but I'm trying to as I get like the monthly fat quarter club sew it all up and then when I'm done with the quilt I'll get out of the club because I'll be done with sewing it what is the name of the low volume fabrics I just showed so I joined the Fat Quarter Shop Low Volume Club and I used January, February, and March bundles. I believe they have 16 in each. And I'm a little more than halfway done with the quilt. How do you decide which fabrics to use in a block when you're using fabric other than what a pattern shows? I really struggle with that. It would be great to show how you decide. We're gonna kinda incorporate that into some future videos. But I kind of think that comes with experience and I used to use electric quilt all the time and like draw it out and like place it and then I kind of just got used to it hi Kimberly from Michigan happy Mother's Day how is Piggy oh he's good he snored all night and he kept me up all night and I was like so mad but he's so cute what kind of sewing chair do I have at home I have an old one and it's either it was either made by like koala or horn one of those companies and it's like tan and it's discontinued so they don't make it anymore do you do the sew sampler block of the month yes I am doing it in Christmas morning fabric to show you different blocks and I showed mine two weeks ago and I'll show it each each month what does low volume mean so low volume just means like a fabric that has kind of a cream white less busy background with just a little bit on it it's not a light it's not a medium it's just kind of a trendy term that came out about six years ago um so all those fabrics were low volume when designing a quilt like designer mystery or make a wish what comes first the fabric or the design the fabric because it all actually what comes first is ship date so the first thing we do is figure out the date that we need it shipped and then we go from there would FQS ever offer a Lori Holt fabric of the month club like they do for Moda so she comes out with three collections a year so we just offer the bundles that way we don't have enough to offer for every month 
have you watched Sasquatch? Oh my gosh. I turned that on and I turned that off in about five seconds. I was like, okay, this is ridiculous. I had to turn it off. Would you ever show us how to use EQ? Um, probably not. They have a lot of videos on their site. I'm not great at it either. What is the skew on the white on white dot fabric? 20708-36. It is out of print, but we will have more in July. Gina says, I got my alternate pattern Jolly Bar 3 all quilted and I love it. Yes, so if you go to Gina Tell's Facebook and Pat Sloan's Facebook, you will see that they did two alternate designs for Jolly Bar 3, so you can do a different layout when you put yours together. Is there a complete fabric requirement list for the new sampler block? So sampler, yes, it's on the blog. Okay, so the next thing I sewed, I'm going to show you some pictures for my sewing room first. So the first picture is, um, I when I got the kit, I had, I took the book. Give me a second, sorry. Okay, I'm going to open it so you can see it on the right, so that you can see what I'm talking about. So this one, when I got the kit, oh yeah, sorry, there we go. I had to label them fabric six, fabric fives, fabric four. So that's what I did is I starched them and then I put alphabetes on them because, you know, like these two fabrics kind of look similar. So things kind of, you know, for me to keep it straight. So the first thing I have is you can see that. And then my second picture is all my alphabetes. So this is when I had to make the dinosaurs. It's a bronchiosaurus. I don't know, brachiosaurus. I don't know. My son made fun of me when I made it, when I said it, he made me keep saying it. So this is what I do is I laid out all of my alphabetes. He did it for me actually. And then at the bottom, those are like double A, double B. I didn't have the expansion pack at home. So I just started over with ABCD and I'll show you my blocks. So these are my blocks and I did use the acorn precision glue to make these. I did these, it took, I don't know, maybe six hours. And the first one I did, I had the legs going the wrong way, so I had to redo it. So these tiny pieces here, I did use that glue. Now, I did not use the glue for over here. I did use it here and here. I used it for these tiny pieces. And so I made six blocks and the six blocks incorporate the six of these that were made previously. So I'm gonna show you my six dinosaur blocks. I did it on Sunday. I don't know how many hours it took. It took, I mean, this is not easy. This is like, I had to pay attention to what I was doing because I had the legs go. I might even have mistakes in these. And then this one. And it hasn't been difficult. I was a little bit concerned about using the Essex, but um, it hasn't been a problem. I starched it and then I have all of my other I started with the plant blocks. That's what the pattern calls them. So I have all of these done. So I will probably, you know, set this aside and work on it again in about a month because I'm trying to space out all my projects. So, but I have it all labeled in like that picture I showed you just so that I can go back to it. Oh, Lori says she comes out with four collections a year. Sorry. Did you do this week's Riley Blake challenge? I did and it's right here. It's right here. So I did not, I don't know, my thing is, I think I'm moving them too much. They're getting all jaggedy. So this is the block for this week. It's called Lady of the Lake. It's designed by Amanda Castor. And I am doing that sashiko stitch, which I know is really hard to see. Let's see. That pink is like, it's so hard to see, but there we go. See how many eye stitches I did? It looks really good in person. You can see my pink stitches. So I didn't really know if it would look good out here, so I just put all my stitches in here, and I got this idea from Bev McCullough. Sorry, we have a lot going on over here. Sorry. <laughs> 
And then I also sewed the Quilting Life. This is a free sew along. And there is a video that was released two days ago by Sherry McConnell. So I'm sewing this and it is a six inch block or a 12 inch block. I did six inch last year. This year I'm gonna do 12 inch. But I thought this would be fun to show. This is how she has it meant to be. Right there. Where, okay, I'm gonna lay it out the way she has it. Now I'm using different fabric. I'm using the Flea Market Collection by Lori Holt. So she has it lined up like this. Sorry, I'm trying to show the same thing. She has it lined up like this. Where these are kind of at the bottom. So my question is, I think I'm gonna do them this way. So do you think that would look good or do you think that gives too much white space right here? I would love if you commented and let me know. I haven't, I just didn't finish the, well obviously I would separate these two. I would separate the blues. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna sew it this way. Now of course you could do this, but this would be, this would probably not look good. Let's see. So you can see that even when I do other people's blocks, I'm, I change it a little bit. So this is how she had it. So I have to decide how I'm going to do that. So you guys comment, let me know what you think. And I'm going to take like a little break for like one second because I need to get a drink of water. And then um, we're going to, Jordan's going to show you all of our past charity quilts from 2014 to today. And I'll be right back. watching while I was in the intermission. Um, I did want to show you that Camille is hosting a quilt along with her Bonnie and Camille quilt bee book and I made this quilt. Gosh, it's almost been two years because, so here are the blocks from this week. It's kind of every other block. So I just kind of wanted to show you the blocks that I made a long time ago. It's a lot of fun and Gina Tell quilted this for me and I put one of her 108s on the back. And you can follow that on Thimble Blossoms on Instagram. And I have something else fun to show you. We have some new pillows. 
that I wanted to show you. These are made by Sew for Home. This is one jelly roll. So she used Flea Market by Lori Holt. So one jelly roll will make both of these pillows. It is a free tutorial on Sew for Home. We've linked it below. It is so cool. It's a basket weave. So this is like weaved under. And these, it's got this beautiful stitch that we're gonna zoom in and try to show that keeps it in place. And it's a completely free tutorial. So everybody's got a jelly roll at home. So you could make it up this weekend. And it fits a 20 inch pillow and it uses all 40 strips to create two pillow tops. It's by Sew for Home. And on the back, she did a classic envelope. It looks so good. So I'll show you from the front too, just so you can kind of get the feel of how big they are. They're so happy. Oh my gosh, these would match my house. So good, I love these. And the stitching is really nice. I think she might have used like a, I'm sure the information's on the blog, but I think she used a thicker weight than 50 weight because it really stands out. It looks really good. So thank you to Sew for Home for letting us borrow these because I was like, can I please borrow them? Everybody's going to love them. Um, and I don't think you've probably seen something like this because I haven't seen a basket weave in a while. So that's so awesome. And it's nice and thick too, textured because it's got all that layer. So I have that to show you. And then, we're doing a series called Blast from the Past where I take old quilts that are like, you know, older and show them to you. So this is an It's So Emma pattern that was published in 2015. So gosh, I'm getting, I'm aging myself. There, the quilt um, comes with crib instructions and lap instructions. This is the lap size. And uh, Deborah made this sample. And let's see what the fabric is. The fabric is Bread and Butter Collection by American Jane and Moda. So it's quite old, but I thought, I'm just gonna start showing y'all quilts that we've had for a while. So I'll hold it from the back or from the front to show you. So this one actually is in the hallway at work um, on a, like a quilt ladder type or quilt rack. And I have something fun to share. I'm gonna kind of tease it. So I am going to bring a lot of old quilts from my house and I found an old one, like real old. And I sent it to, it's a Joanna Figueroa pattern. And I said, Joanna, do you still have this pattern? It's called O. And she was like, Kim, that's so old. And I was like, well, we're doing this new segment on our, on our live stream called Blast from Past. Can you reprint it? And she's like, that file's gone. She's like, what are you doing? She's like, it's so old. I go, well, what if we do it free? So she's going to republish this old pattern. It's called O's, O-H-S or something like that. I'm going to bring the old quilt. It's like at least 12 years old. She's going to publish it for free on her blog, and then I'm going to show it to you. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And then I'm going to show you... this quilt i'm going to just show you from the front because it's too big to put on the table it's ginormous one let's see okay you see it okay oh my gosh okay it's huge okay let's see this looks better so i'll show you on the table a little bit so this is our K Facet Club that ships in a week or two. This was designed by Crystal. Sue made it and Mike at mylongarm.com quilted it. And if you wanna sign up for this club, what you get is 20 fat quarters plus you always get a free pattern that's exclusive to the club. So this is shipping out the end of next week and um, we usually show this uh, this club and then Ruby Stars Club also. I'm gonna just put this to the side. And then I have some other stuff to show you because gosh, I haven't talked long enough, right? Like, I can't believe that y'all are still watching. This is our basic of the month. We're gonna start showing you the basic of the month in the videos. 
So these are on sale for the entire month of May. Can you believe we're in May already? I mean, really. All Taylor Seville products are on sale also. These are just two of them. This is Thread Magic and pins. They have a lot of different pins. Thimble Blossoms patterns in paper and PDF are on sale. And this book, Scrappy Happy Quilts by Kate Henderson is also on sale. So this is our sale item for the month. And the basics is on sale 20% and the other items are on sale 30%. And each month we always have a fabric on sale, a notion or notion manufacturer on sale, a pattern designer on sale and a book, either one book or more than one, it kind of depends. And then I got an email last Thursday from Riley Blake and they said, look, Bev made this. It's super cute, do you wanna offer a kit? So I said, sure. So we actually had enough yardage of it to do kits. So we put together a couple of kits. If we run out, I'll order more yardage to make more. So Bev sent this to show us, Bev McCullough from Flamingo Toes. She's amazing, she does amazing stuff on her blog. And let's see, it's 14 by 34. So we have this collection in stock, but we also have this kit. And I just thought, well, since she made it, it'd be super cute to show it on the live stream since it's an actual quilt. And I'm going to show you a couple more things and then I have a lot to talk about. We're going to do a segment. We're going to add a segment going forward where we answer questions from previous weeks so that we always get back to you on things. So when I started this live stream two or three years ago, this was the question we got every week. Can the boxed kits from Riley Blake have a pattern? Sorry, they're not straight. Um, I got that question every week, forever and ever and ever. And so Riley Blake has written these patterns. I think this was her first box pattern. So now we have these five patterns by Lori Holt in stock, and I have made this one. So these are now available as patterns, and they will continue to do that when the kits are sold out. They're not gonna do it right away. And just to go along with that, I decided to put this on sale today. So if you're looking for a vintage happy to layer cake or kit, ooh, and it has got that red that's used in those blocks, this is on sale. So this will probably sell out by, I don't know, one o'clock, but this is on sale today. I thought, well, I'll put something on sale that's, that goes with it. And then some other things, let's see. So one of the big questions we got last week is, Y'all wanted some white on white bundles. So we have Carrie that works here and she did a great job. Carrie is behind all of this. What she did is every Moda collection that comes out, we're gonna put together a white on white bundle. We will also do it with other manufacturers if they have enough white on white. Moda seems to do the most. But we put together, actually Carrie put together a bunch of white on whites that we could order. And so there will be a Tone on Tone Treasures Fat Quarter Bundle featuring white on white fabrics. And it will be available in like one or two weeks because we have to wait for that to come in. And we will just change those out over time. And in the community tab, we did list some bundles that are already either online or on the coming soon page with white on white. And if you are a YouTube member, we have a coupon in the community tab and it expires on Sunday, so if you're in there, um, and if you're a YouTube member, thank you for being a member. We are gonna have a live stream for you next Tuesday at 9 a.m. It's just gonna be a simple Q&A, so if you have a question for me, go ahead and put it in. There's a, in the community tab, we asked for questions, and I'm gonna answer all the questions on Tuesday, and then I'm happy to answer any other questions. I did wanna show one other thing. We have the video of the week where we're throwing back to older videos. And this is a video we did years and years ago, 2015. So this is Birchin and it was designed by Pat Bravo of Art Gallery. And it uses their Hello Bear fabric, which is actually still in print. We don't have the kit anymore, but we do have, you know, the yardage. And I just thought, well, that's a really cool one. That's that's a um, that's a quilt that you, you um, maybe need a little wine to do or something. That's really hard. Um, so Kathy says, I love seeing the older quilts. I wasn't even thinking about quilting when you made most of these. Yeah, probably. Are there older charity quilts still available? Yes, they're all land. They are all on the blog. 
is the crossroads quilt pattern available that was a charity quilt and it is on the blog and it is in my bedroom hi from Cibolo, texas i'm also doing the sherry quilts long and honestly i had the same thought about rearranging the four squares and pointing each outward but i'm torn i like sherry's placement because i like that up arrow so i'm not sure which way i'll go Yay, I'm glad that it wasn't only me that was thinking that. I just don't know what to do. And so I just sometimes will just let things sit there until I decide. I will read the comments tonight and see what you guys say, though, before I sew it together. I watch your Friday videos, but how do I subscribe to the ones you do on the other days? So we have two channels. We have this channel, which is the Fat Quarter Shop channel, which focuses on quilting. We have a second channel called Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube, so you can subscribe to that channel. And on either of the channels, if you click in the top right of YouTube, like on the channel name, it'll say like, it'll say um, preferences, all, some, or none. So you would click all, because we all love Kimberly Wright, so click all. Will FQS carry Layla Boutique's fabric? Yes, yes. Yes, it is online. It will be shipping like September, October. I'm actually ordering it later today. There will be a block of the month with it. I will have blocks to show you next week. The block of the month is great because it is great for beginners. For serendipity, I noticed some are sewing their rows together as they go. And I am I correct in thinking the sashing between the rows are two and a half inch strips? So the sashing instructions are within that block's patterns. So, and there should be a letter on there. So yes, those are mostly two and a half. I'm not sure if they all are, but it is in that, that week's instructions. And I did want to announce, we have a new FQS staffer. His name is Jordan. He is the team member behind the camera. So make sure to give him a nice welcome. And we have some new YouTube members. So thank you for being a member. We have Katie Newman, Sue Wines, Renee Tanner, and Janet Breyer. So guys, um, thanks for watching today. I had so much fun with you guys. Everybody have a happy Mother's Day, and I will see you guys. Uh, if you're a YouTube member, I'll see you on Tuesday, and if not, I'll see you next Friday. So have a great weekend. Bye.